What's up you guys? Welcome to Chef and Pepper's Farm. If you're new, I'm Natasha and it is a preservation video type of day. So we harvested somewhere close to 80 pounds worth of peppers in our last garden tour video. It was excessive. We harvested 100 pounds of food overall just that one day. Our garden is producing wonderfully and now we have to preserve a lot of it. This video is going to take place over a couple of days for a few different reasons. Number one, we are not full-time homesteaders. My husband does work in the ministry, so our time is divided between the house and church. And we also have five kids who play softball. Well, three out of the five of them play softball. The littler ones don't play yet. But they have three different practice schedules and three different game schedules, and our lives are very hectic. So I don't just have an entire day or two days to put forth into preserving everything. So you're gonna see this happen over the course of a couple of different days. I'm gonna walk you through the process. We are going to be preserving our basil in one video and then we're gonna preserve the peppers in another. So we're gonna be doing a bunch of different things with peppers. Okay, so I had to make an adjustment to the intro of this video after we had finished making everything because of the fact that I frequently change my mind. So what we are making in this video includes a copycat recipe of the guacamole salsa. It includes children. It includes a spicy green chili powder, dehydrated bell peppers, both sliced and diced, so you can use them for the different purposes. Pickled hot wax peppers, pickled jalapenos, and pickled serrano peppers. A creamy jalapeno sauce, a creamy serrano pepper sauce, we ended up making diced green chili peppers that we canned. That is what we made in this video, so let's go check it out. <laughs> it is Saturday, it is Michigan game day. I'm a big Michigan fan, although we live in South Carolina, my heart belongs to the Wolverines, so that is the get up. Put down in that pantry. I'm actually not sure who's eating it, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Okay, it wasn't the watermelon, it was just the butternut. I was like, oh my gosh, I just These right here are dehydrated pepper slices. My intent was to dehydrate these and then rehydrate them to put on pizza. So here we have our green peppers and a cup of hot water. I'm going to pour this over the top of this and let this soak. So right here, these are the rehydrated green peppers that we are going to put on pizza or in fajitas with onions tacos and things like that over the winter so these actually rehydrated really nicely so i feel a lot more confident dehydrating a bunch of these some days the chopping and the dicing is pretty much all me and other days the whole family gets involved and those days are the best Okay, we're gonna start on the creamy jalapeno sauce. It's gonna be very similar to the creamy serrano pepper sauce. So we basically increased this recipe to match the amount of jalapenos that I intended to use for it. I've got two cups of diced onions, six cups of chopped up jalapenos. I'm gonna put in probably the rest of this garlic. I also save these containers and then we'll chop up garlic and pour water over the top of it and put this back into my refrigerator. Oh, okay, I don't have to get an extra container. I have no idea how much. Yeah. Just thing in there. I, I love garlic and onions too. I'm gonna turn this on, bring this to a simmer. I'm gonna add the back cup of water, let it cook down, cover it so that way we don't, you know, scorch our eyeballs, and then we'll start mixing it up. The majority of these recipes we're gonna do in the next coming days, but I am going to pre chop up these serrano peppers, put them in a Tupperware container so I can just pull things out, have it on hand while we're making these and cooking these recipes. So, all right, so I'm going to add in like two teaspoons of salt. This is Celtic sea salt. Okay, so I'm going to add in a couple of teaspoons of onion powder. And then you're going to add in a cup and a half of your favorite oil. I'm also putting in a couple of tablespoons of water just to help the mixture blend super well. Look at that. Yum. This is a solid batch, about five pounds of tomatillos. We're going to cook this down. We're going to try and make a copycat of my favorite salsa. This stuff right here. I love this. 
stuff. I don't love the extra ingredients though. So now that these have all changed colors, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into the food processor. I just blended up the creamy, so the creamy jalapeno sauce. And I think combining the two might make this into something really awesome. I'm using an immersion blender. And then I'm gonna throw an avocado in this and we're just gonna keep mixing until we find the blend that we like. So there we have it. I'm gonna grab a jar and we're gonna put that in there. Did you wanna try a piece? You wanna try some? I am so happy. We're gonna grow some of the tomatillos next year. So you make this? And the only thing I will say is this is a much more vibrant green and I'm sure it's because they use food coloring in it because the avocado will turn brown as it oxidizes in the sauce. So. Whoa. So to start off, we have three and a half cups of pureed cooked down tomatillos that were just cooked down in water and then pureed the food processor. And then we have a cup of the creamy jalapeno sauce, about four tablespoons of lemon juice, and an avocado. Figuring out how to make this at home is a game changer because we grow all the ingredients to make this. All of them, the tomatillos, the jalapenos, the onions, garlic. We don't grow lime juice, but we're working on it. Lemon juice. I'm really excited about this. This is delicious. That's what we talk about. I am not All right, so I just spent the morning chopping up green peppers that are sweet. They don't have any spice to them. These ones are in little squares, and then I also have ones that are in slices, so we can use those for things like putting on top of pizza or fajitas, things of that nature. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to heat my dehydrator up to 120 degrees, and I'm going to pop these in there for about eight hours and then check on them. Once these are fully dehydrated, I can store them in an airtight container, a plastic Ziploc bag, whichever, and all you have to do to rehydrate these is put them in a bowl with some hot water on top of it and they will rehydrate within about an hour. All right, while this is all going, I think we're gonna do some pickled jalapenos and some pickled serrano peppers, which is very, very simple, very straightforward. So these are my serrano peppers. On Sunday, we chopped all of these up. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill up my jar with my serrano peppers. And then you wanna kind of pack it in there a little bit because these will shrink down when they get canned. And then I'm gonna take that same all-purpose brine and I'm going to fill it up to this bottom line right here. Mm -hmm. 
And then we're gonna put a clean sterile lid on the top of this. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator until I have enough to water bath the kidneys. We're gonna do the exact same thing with a jalapenos. I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with some of our hot wax peppers as well. It is a stegosaurus. What's up guys? We are on the continuation circuit of processing these peppers. And as you can see behind me, I've got a bunch of jars that I need to can. I also have more jars that I need to fill with our Anaheim peppers. I'm going to dice those up and use those as a mild green chili. We're gonna can those in our all-purpose brine and then we're gonna water bath them so we will have them all throughout the winter and the off season of the pepper growing months to use them as diced green chilies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cold pack my water bath canner for this first part. When I'm in my cold pack is I'm going to put cold jars with cold water into the pot. I'm going to bring it up to boil all at the same time because you do not want to heat cold jars in boiling water. They will shatter. Ask me how I know. Once this has all been boiling, I still have many more jars that I need to process. And instead of dumping out my boiling water, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the rest of these cold jars up to a warm temperature. I'm going to do that by first letting them sit out on the counter and warm up naturally while this first batch of cold processing is going. And then after that, I'm going to put them in some hot water in the sink over there to help bring them up to a nice warm temperature so that way I can put them right from the warm water into my water bath canner and not have a risk of it shattering. Let's go ahead and chop up some of these Anaheim peppers. I'm gonna do this in the food processor first. I'm gonna remove the stem, and I'm just gonna throw them in there, chop them up, and we'll go from there. Yeah. You can see we just pulse these in the food processor. They're good to go. all-purpose pickling brine. And I'm gonna fill this up enough to cover our peppers. These peppers will reduce in size as they are canned. These only get canned for about 10 minutes in rolling boil for a water bath canner. Bring 
now that I'm done cutting my fingers off, what I have here is a collection of hot peppers. Some of these are details, some of these are habaneros, some of these are cayennes. Like this right here I think is an Anaheim. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to separate the colored peppers, my reds, my yellows, and my greens, and I'm gonna put the greens in one jar to be salsa, not salsa. I'm gonna put the greens in one jar to become hot sauce, and then I'm gonna put the reds in another jar to become hot sauce. Alright, so over here I have my food processor. We're going to finish making the serrano sauce. What we did is we, just to recap, we had five cups of serrano peppers, two cups of onions, a whole bushel of cilantro, and several tablespoons of garlic, and we yeah. cooked all of those down into mush, essentially, and we're going to blend that up in the food processor. So I added a couple of tablespoons of lime juice in here, and now I'm going to put about a cup and a half of oil. You can use your favorite oil here, use whatever makes your heart happy. Then I'm gonna add in a few pinches of salt. I'm also gonna throw in a little bit of onion and garlic powder because it makes me happy and I like that. This last batch of serrano pepper sauce came out so good. Just wonderful. Oh no! All right, so here we have our hot green pepper powder. This can make you cough, so be mindful of that. And there you, <clears throat> there you have it. To clean this, I typically put a pump of soap in there. All right guys, it has been an exhausting few days going ahead and working through this over and over and over again. So I'm really happy to tell you that all of this turned out really, really well and I'm really excited about all of the things that we're gonna be able to put up in the pantry throughout this winter. It's gonna be amazing. So I will see you guys in the next video.